What's up guys? Man, I'm so excited to bring you guys another video. I really appreciate all my follows. Everybody that comments on the videos, man. If you're new to the channel, please comment, give it a thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever, as long as you comment and check it out. Keep following, man. Give me some questions if you've got them. Please like, subscribe, check me out on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, turn on notifications if you like this video, watch other ones. Um, and just stay tuned, man. I really appreciate it. This video is going to be basically a uh, top couple of mistakes that I think owner operators make coming on to a company, right? So one of the first questions that owner operators always ask me is, what type of insurance do I need coming on? Um, if this is if they haven't done the process before, maybe they're a company driver and they're stepping into the owner operator realm, you know, what kind of insurance do I need through you? What do I need to do? Do I need to go get my own DOT number, my own MC number? What do you need for me to sign on to your company? So an owner operator, guys, if you're new to it, if you're veteran, this, this little part is it for you. But if you're new to it, you don't need an MC number or DOT number on your own. That is why you're signing on to a company so that you can run under their DOT number, under their authority, under their MC number and reap their benefits of, you know, hopefully um, reasonable insurance premiums and costs, right? Because the company is required to manage the uh, federal motor carrier insurance, which is your liability and cargo, right? Um, which is the cargo insurance. If the cargo is damaged, your liability, if you wreck it and kill somebody, a million dollars is usually uh, what's required, right? So a million and a hundred, which is a hundred cargo, hundred thousand dollars cargo coverage for what you're carrying on the trailer. So if you get a load that's say half a million, hundred thousand isn't gonna cut it. So if you're carrying for that carrier and you're an owner operator, you wouldn't wanna carry anything over a hundred thousand dollars, right? Unless that's a big carrier and they, you know they have a hundred thousand, but they're worth maybe a million dollars. Then and it's a hundred twenty thousand dollar cargo. That insurance would cover it, and they'd probably be responsible for the other twenty grand um, or whatever, right? So those are things to think about when you're carrying somebody else's freight for a company. When you sign on as an owner operator, you need to have a new DOT inspection done. You need to have a drug test done. Um, you need to have a MVR done uh, where they pull your MVR. They need to do a background check and they pull your PSP score when signing on with a carrier. Those are all the things that they need to do, along with many other documents, a lease agreement, different things, right? Um, so they, they need to do an orientation, um, as far as it can be a, a, a video com orientation, like a zoom call or an in office orientation. Um, there needs to be some sort of orientation done. Um, but basically, uh, the, I think the mistakes owner operators make is they sign on with a company that has a bad safety score, doesn't have a good safety program as far as hours of service and monitoring you, the owner operator to make sure you're doing your job. Maybe you have no idea about logs. Maybe you're new to the industry. Maybe you know you you you're a cowboy and you need the reins kind of held back so you don't make those mistakes. Um, but if you if they don't have a good safety program and they don't have a good safety score, guys, that just means that you're going to get pulled in for more inspections. Unless you have a prepass, you're still going to get pulled in and pulled over. But if they have a prepass, you can minimize some of it. Um, but if you don't have a prepass with that company and you sign on. Um, the mistakes I see them make is they, they fail safety inspections because that company has a reputation of having a lot of drivers fail safety inspections. So then they're going to be scrutinized or DOT is going to look at that company that you're signing on to as an owner operator. They're going to look at them more harshly because they constantly are screwing up. They constantly making mistakes, right? Um, allowing their drivers to go out with, you know, bad medical cards, uh, faulty trailer lights, trailer brakes, um, you know, whatever it is, right? So those things um, can cause you to have a problem. So when you're signing on with the company, check out their safety score. You can go to fmcsa.gov. You can Google, hey, that company, say moneypennytrucking.com. It'll pop up. Bam. You can check their snapshot and see if they uh, you know, have a good safety score, if they have a good safety company. You can go on there and check out the reviews. Um, go on Facebook. Go on Instagram. Facebook has reviews. Google has reviews. Go to their website. Check them out. See what type of freight they haul, right? The other mistake I see owner-operators make is they're not – equipped to go out on the road. They don't have enough money, right? So if you don't have, say, 3,500 to five grand uh, in a hot shot setup with a newer truck, okay? Not an older truck because the older trucks break down. You need to have 10 grand in the bank, guys. The old trucks, whether it's to 05, 08, 2011, they, the transmissions go out, guys. And if you don't have five grand, 10 grand, whether it be available on a credit card or cash in the bank or together, if you don't have about 10 grand, you know, five to 10 grand, I recommend don't do it. That, operator, that owner operator is making a mistake because you're going to go out there. I've seen it happen. I've, I've, I've leased guys on. We almost are to the point now where we won't lease anybody on without newer trucks, 2016 and up, right? Because the older trucks that I've seen it every single time, they'll come on, they'll run, you know, sometimes a week, sometimes two months. 
the transmission goes out and they don't have 3,500. Now I have to handle getting that freight delivered. Now I have to get, you know, I'm not gonna leave you stranded on the road. It's my responsibility to help get you, you know, at least get the truck towed to a storage facility and then get you home, whether it be a rental car or whatever. And every time that owner operator is like, man, I don't have 3,500 or I don't have five grand or whatever, or you have a rear end go out, right? But you may leave out on the first trip and you didn't check your equipment and you didn't leave out with all new tires, okay? And your trailer service brakes, axle seals, um, things like that. And you roll out, you're gonna have blowouts, guys. If you're expecting to take your farm truck and put it into use in a commercial motor vehicle application where it's gonna run 500 miles a day as a hot shot and you don't even have new tires and this thing's been sitting in the backfield with dry rotted tires, your first load, you put it under weight, under stress, those tires are gonna blow, okay? I've seen it happen every time. I've signed on almost 100 different people now, uh, you know, through coming and going and people that we've had on. It's probably 70 to 100, somewhere in there. And, you know, we've moved millions in freight over the years, right? And I see the older trucks do this. They, and so we don't do it anymore. We say, you coming on, do you know that this is going to happen? I explain to them the, the process with newer people. And they might have experience in, in logging trucks. They might have experience. They come out of a Schneider truck, a prime truck, whatever. And they're like, oh, I want to do hot shot. And then I don't know why they don't think about that. So that's one of the biggest mistakes they made is not being prepared financially when they hit the road. That's one of the biggest mistakes owner operators make. Now in a semi, um, don't go out there in an old truck, guys, if you're not prepared. And don't set up for a load. You know, I'm not saying don't run an old truck because run an old truck. You got new tires on it. You got old Pete, you got old Freightliner, you got old Kenworth, whatever. And they're cool trucks, man. They really are, right? you need to understand and most guys that have those trucks do they understand the truck they're mechanically inclined they, they can fix something if it breaks down they pre they got their truck ready before they, they they're rolling out those trucks they got new tires on them and stuff and they got a little bit of money in the bank because usually those guys that buy those trucks they bought them for a reason they like those trucks they're pre-ld you know they're pre-emissions whatever and those trucks do better and they run longer if they're taken care of, right? It could be a million mile truck, two million mile truck. They could have had an overhaul on the engine, could have been an uh, in frame that they just did not that long ago. So it basically has a new motor and that's a good truck, right? Um, but those guys, you, you, they still, when they go out, usually they've got, you know, 10 grand, 15 grand, 20 grand accessible on credit cards and in the bank and they're okay. But uh, as far as, you know, if you're just buying a semi and you just, just bought it and you don't have a lot of money, buy a newer truck, guys. Don't buy these older trucks. Um, and make sure that you have money, credit cards available, something, because you're gonna get out there, you're gonna break down. But more importantly, a second mistake, that would probably be the two we talked about. Third mistake would probably be, don't get under a load from North Carolina to California, okay, on your first couple loads, man. Pull some loads that are local. With them older trucks like that, don't go more than 500 miles from home. That way you can get that truck back home if it, the transmission goes out and you need to go get a different job or whatever. And it's not stuck uh, uh, several thousand miles away in California or Arizona at some place and, you, and it's going to cost you, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars to get it back home, get the freight delivered, you know, and remedy that situation, right? Or you're going to, you know, try to get work done with somebody that you know who's going to do you a good job and do you a good deal. Whereas some guy in California don't know you is going to rip you off, charge you storage, charge you outrageous fees to get your transmission done or do an in-frame and on, a, on the motor. For those of you who don't know, an in-frame is when they rebuild the motor without taking it out of the truck. Um, but basically, you know, that's basically my two cents, guys, on, on the biggest, uh, you know, mistakes that I think that owner operators make, okay, is they get out there and they're just not prepared. That'd be the biggest thing. And any way, shape, or form not prepared or, or partnering with a bad company. So um, that's probably a big one with the hot shot side, not on the semi side. The semi side, usually when you partner, you go on, you know, if you're going with the big ones like Prime, um, you know, JB Hunt, whatever, owner operator opportunities, um, they're going to, you know, they're, they're corporatized. They're probably going to take care of you. They have different, you know, programs to help you with, you know, mechanics and motors. They'll pull you into one of their local yards or, or at the, the home base shop and have some work done cheaper than you'd be able to get it done anywhere else. Stuff like that. Uh, uh, more of a mom and pop company. If you sign on with them, are they going to be help you be able to help you in a breakdown if you don't have the money? Are you going into it with, you know, with your own money so you can take care of it? Because I see guys buy trucks, even you good use trucks with 200,000 miles on semis and they have $10,000 worth of work done on them in the first 90 days. So you just need to be prepared for that. Cause you can, if you can make it through that, you can be profitable and you can run those trucks and make money. I see a lot of people do it. Just, you know, make sure you get oil samples done, take a mechanic with you, have somebody look at that truck so you're not buying a turd guys. Um, but on the hot shot side, um, most of the trucks come in, they're newer trucks. So we have less issues with that type of thing, but they do come in and they, they, they sign on with, this is the biggest 
number one thing I see is they partner with a company that is uh, one guy in a truck and he's leasing on owner operators, right? And they have no idea who this guy is. They didn't check his reviews. They didn't look him up. They didn't look up his uh, a snapshot to check and see if he uh, his MC is even valid, uh, if that's the name of it, if he even owns it, if his insurance is valid, because they might spend money. Say he says, man, I need you know, 1500 down for the insurance. So you give him $1,500. And then he says, oh man, you know, uh, we factor over here and we only get paid every three days, right? So, and they, and they, and, and they, they take, uh, you know, they give me 80%. And then I'm gonna take you know 15% of that, and you gotta you know I'm not able to find good loads because I use all load boards and I'm no relationships. It's my first year. Nobody will work with me. Um, I don't have any experience, so I can't be vetted. You know, like say you go to Landstar, one of these other companies, and you have a new authority, and uh, they don't want to work with you. They will work with you if they've worked with you in the past. So if 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 you if you start your own authority, and you had an MC before and they worked with you for X and they did X amount of loads. They'll say, oh yeah, we'll work with you again. No problem. Don't worry about having a new MC. Or if you've worked with them as a owner operator at another company, they sometimes will take that, that experience in, into uh, basically review and they'll let you still pull, pull for them. So um, getting into a situation where, you know, you sign on with somebody, they can't get any freight. They don't have any access. They have a new authority. You're setting yourself up for failure. So the new owner operators, what you guys need to be looking for and what you don't even know what to look for is look for companies that have freight, that have been in business for three plus years because three plus years to an insurance company, a new, uh, are you not considered a new authority anymore, right? Anything that's less than three years old, you're still considered a new entry business, right? Or a startup. I know it's crazy. I know this. I, fresh, I was struggling with it with my first couple of years when insurance was really high and certain brokers won't work with you for 90 days, six months or a year. But if you've been in business for three plus years, um, your insurance should be a little cheaper. Okay. Um, with that company. Okay. Now you have to get your insurance to them. Okay. Your car going to liability has to be through that company. So the owner operator has to pay it. So why would you pay it a high premium signing on with your brother who just started his authority when you could save a thousand dollars a month, maybe by signing on with somebody like us, his, his premium monthly might be, you know, 1500, 2000 down and 2000 to 2500 a month with us. You may have nothing down or a very minimal amount down and, um, you know, 800 to $1,200 a month. Right. So that's a huge savings right off the bat. So even if you your truck broke down or you broke your hip and you're out for a month, you only have to pay eight hundred to a thousand dollars versus paying two grand. And you're not generating any revenue as well as the truck payment. You have to pay trailer payment, whatever. Right. Um, sign on with the company that is proven. So if they've been in business for three years and you have other people that, you know, they can clearly see that, that it worked for you, they can look up the reviews and they don't have a bunch of negative reviews and it looks like they pay their people. That's probably a good company to work for. Somebody who just started their authority yesterday, I see a lot of fraud scams on Facebook, man. Um, for example, they start their authority yesterday. They sign on a bunch of drivers and they're out eating lobster and steak and doing this and doing that and, 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 and wearing gold chains or, you know, all new clothes. They're in the mall talking about their spending bands, whatever. And they're not paying their drivers. Okay. They're, they're them driving. I mean, that's a lot of money guys. If you fa Sorry about that guys. Had a quick little malfunction, but anyway, um, say that driver's got five trucks or that company that just started has five trucks leased on, right? And they're constantly dealing with uh, factoring funds. And that's trucks average, say $4,000 to $5,000 um, per truck in revenue per week. Well, now that person has $20,000, $25,000 a week going through their hands, right? Some people can't manage that. Some people are just not good at it, man. They're, 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 they're uh, unscrupulous individuals is, is one way to put it, okay? So... And I've seen it time and time again. I've had so many people call me and say, hey, man, this guy owes me six grand. This guy owes me five grand, man. Can I go to work for you, man? You seem legit. This guy's screwing me over, you know, or whatever. And I've had uh, um, several different people that even still are employed with us now um, that came out of bad situations. You know, they were broke, out of fuel, stuck, still had the freight on their trailer. And they couldn't even get an advance from that person to, um, you know, to uh, deliver the load and get it off their trailer, right? So I've hired people on, had to help them get that load delivered, drop it off, okay? Pay it in front of them some money so that they could sign on and work with us and, uh, you know, and then help them get out of a situation. And, and it was because I liked them and I, I looked them up and I seen that they were good people and they just met up with somebody bad and, and they believed them. Because I believe, guys, that the majority of people are good people and you can believe somebody and get led down a, a very bad path and put yourself in a bad position. And some of those people were on the edge of bankruptcy. 
losing their truck getting repoed you know and, and and the whole nine right their trailer getting repoed no way to continue making a living and i helped them out of those situations kept them paid got them on some good freight got them making money and you know they had brand new trucks guys and stuff like that and they just happened to sign on with the wrong person so uh, another thing is these owner operators with the hot shot realm that 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 sort of happens more in the hot shot realm than it does the semi realm guys uh, but again with the hot shot trucks is guys get into it and thinking man i want to an easy way, you see all these videos on YouTube, how to make a thousand bucks a day with a hot shot, with a pickup truck, right? And no trailer and no experience, no CDL, right? So they get a, a pickup truck and they start pulling RVs. Your average guys with the RVs is like $1.35, $1.40 a mile. Even if they push $1.70 a mile and you're you're a power only unit, you get all the way to California from Elkhart, Indiana, pulling campers, right? Um, or, or fifth wheels. And you drop that unit off and you get 3,000, 3,500, whatever it is, right? And you don't have any backhauls. You don't have any relationships with people with boats. You don't have any relationships with people with other um, types of commodities to pull back. And you don't have an authority and you can't because you're, you're running for them. You're running under their authority and their, their setup in Elkhart or some other authority, right? Um, and you don't have a way to get to the load boards to get backhauls to get back to Indiana, even if it was just at a dollar a mile or to cover fuel for 70 cents, right? There's no money in that. And they get into it in the hot shot room. That's a big mistake that owner operators make. They get into that because it's a, it's easy entry. It's easy to get into. There's low low startup, low money to get into it, right? There's no cost associated with, you know, you just need a truck, which you can finance, maybe a couple grand on a credit card for fuel, and you're pulling campers if you get set up with them, right? But the, the thing is, you're going to drive there and back with, with very little profit. By the time you get done with a week worth of work, you might make 500, 1,000 bucks, okay? Um, and you're on to the next one. Then you get in this desperation cycle that you're like, oh, I got to get the next load just to make money because if I don't get this one done, you know, I can't do this and I can't make money. I can't do this. It shouldn't be that way, guys. On freight, it should be you're running freight. You, you're successful. You come home. You've got $1,500, $2,500, $3,500 in profit after expenses in the bank on Friday and you go home. That's the way it should be, guys. And if you're not doing at least $1,500 after expenses... Um, and get, when you start, when you start up, there's some different costs when you start, right? You got, you know, trailer payments, paying off credit cards that, they, that you got into it with, um, maybe debt service to certain things. Um, you know, you, you bought tarps and chains and stuff on your credit card that you're trying to pay off or whatever. But I've seen several people come on with us and buy another truck and another truck just by running a truck, um, and put drivers in them guys. So it can be done. Um, but that's the, one of the biggest mistakes I see owner operators make is going to the camper side of things, right? Or signing on with somebody who's really unscrupulous, who doesn't pay, who doesn't do things. When you, when you see somebody say something to you, like just sign the BOL and send it to me, even though you haven't delivered the load, you're not with the right company guys. Okay. And they're talking about sending that in. I, one of the owner operators came on with us and he said, yeah, man, you know what this guy told me that I used to work for? He said, I was like three hours away and it was a Friday or something. And he said, we needed money. And just sign the BOL and send it to him. That's basically fraud, right? And uh, and I'm going to submit it to the factory company. Well, the factory company caught on to it, right? And once they do that, um, from my understanding, I've talked to other people that have had this happen to them in the industry. And they said that once the factory company finds out about that, they freeze all the assets, right? They're not, they're not going to work with you no more. They're not going to pay you anymore. And something like that can't continue to happen, right? So... Um, they're going to want you to go somewhere else. Now you're under contract with them. Well, maybe you got that freight on your trailer. You hauled that load. They found out about that situation that your, your boss told you to do or whatever. Maybe you didn't even do it and he did it to be known to you. You didn't know about it. All right. And he factored the money he's got in the pocket and he went to the mall and, uh, you're waiting to get paid on the load. You delivered it and you're stuck in California and you live in New York or whatever. Right. So you got to be careful who you're signing on with and, and what avenue you're going down and which way you're going. There's good companies out there. There's a lot of them, guys. There's a lot of good you know, one to five truck companies that are wanting, wanting to grow, wanting to expand, and you want to make sure you get on with them, right? The other thing is with uh, owner operators is they get on with a company that the expenses are too high. They think, oh, you know, I'm going to get paid on all this two, three dollar a mile freight. And, uh, you know, the insurance is, is expensive, but forget it. My truck payment's expensive. Forget it. So they didn't set up right. They didn't set up with, you know, uh, truck payments as low as possible. Um, a little bit of savings in the bank when they roll out. Getting on with a company that pays you know, 75, 80, 85% of the load to you as an owner operator, right? Um, or maybe they didn't have a trailer and they get into a bad trailer lease program, or maybe they get into a bad truck lease. You see that a lot with uh, the lease purchase deals. 
you know, it's never really been a good deal to the to uh, the driver, right? I see a lot of that. You see it with, you know, I think Prime has them. Um, many different people have them. Now, some people um, actually like them. And I've, I've been in orientations when I used to go to work for companies before I started my own company um, where they said, man, I paid off two trucks with, you know, uh, LMR leasing or whatever different different companies, right? I paid off to a truck with Prime, you know, lease purchase over so many years. I paid off a truck here and they liked it. And they did well with it, you know, and then, they, well, things got hard and I sold my truck or whatever. So those lease purchase things have worked for some people that I've met, but the majority of people from what I hear, the lease purchase deal, all they're doing is pushing all the maintenance off onto you and trying to basically, you know, defer taxes, defer everything off onto you and less headache for them and, and kind of situate themselves in a better position. Otherwise, they wouldn't even offer it, guys. They're not interested in helping you. They're not interested in helping the driver. They're just not. Um, so that's a that's another big mistake I see owner operators make. Then I see owner operators move around a lot. You know, you see that's how we know when not to hire you. If I look at your record and every two three months you get a new job or uh, go work for a new company, I start to ask myself why? Why would you know? Why would I hire you? On you're gonna do it to me? You know what was the problem, right? And if they say you know things that make sense, like oh this company was screwing me over, they wasn't paying me, I'm gonna dive into it and look into it a little bit more and see if it's something you weren't doing right, something that you know whatever okay so if those situations arise you know don't move around a lot try to get with the company that you're going to stick with unless you just go into you know being an owner operator and you want to start your own authority and then add trucks and build a business and have a fleet that's a different thing but if you're going to go into it just try to find the, the the best company you can up front so do your diligence do your research and find the best company up front so you're not having to go to this one and quit go to this one and run two months and quit go to this one and run two months and quit because it doesn't look good on your on your on your record guys um, but if you, if you can find a good company and you can, you, maybe you go to one or two, three companies and it's, it's not exactly what it was supposed to be the way they said it. That's why I tell people when you're starting authority and, and leasing on drives, get a clear understanding. So it's also your job to get that clear understanding with the company that you're going to lease on with as an owner operator. You know, where do I need to keep my equipment? What is my job description? What am I expected to do? What are you paying for your portion? You know, what am I, what am I giving you 25% for Right. Um, are they paying, you know, factoring fees? Are they paying um, this? Are you being charged for factoring? Whatever, right? So try to get into a lease where, you know, if you can, the insurance is reasonable. If you're paying it, which you're going to be paying it nine times out of ten, there's some companies you're not. Landstar, you're going to do a 75-25 split, but they pay insurance. So if you think about that, signing on with me or a company like myself doing an 80-20 split, but you're paying insurance, it's probably the same thing as doing a 75 25 with them and they're paying insurance. But the difference is, from what I've heard, they averaged about $2 a mile, but their average revenues weekly were around $4,000. So they're less than ours. So our weekly revenues may have been, and some, most companies like us are from five to 7,000 for a hot shot. Um, and, and, you know, from uh, 75 to 10,000 for a, a semi, um, those might not be the same for them, right? Based on how they want to run, what they want to do, right? So those are the things that I think that owner operators make the biggest mistakes in the beginning is, you know, not finding the right company and so on. So be prepared. Look for the right company. Do your math. Do your diligence. That's the Truck and Grass. I'm not. Please follow, like, and subscribe. I appreciate you tuning in.